and we'll get into this. Now, today, and I don't know if you saw from the email I sent you, uh, we, are, we are looking at how we cautiously come out of COVID, you know, without any fear and anxiety. There is this horrific problem at the moment, and you're, all of you will know about it, it's this long COVID. And apparently that they've now got I think 200 symptoms which they, that people have got. We are in, in our, not this next month, because we're not going to do it next month, but in our advanced communication skills, um, myself and I'm, I don't know if Mark's going to be there, but Mark Chambers and um, Navid Akhtar are going to be there. And we're going to be talking about how we can, how we can use some of these tools to help some of the symptoms. It's not, we're not talking about a cure for long COVID or no promises, but things like the chronic fatigue that's attached to it, the fibromyalgia uh, kind of symptoms and the anxiety that's created. As a hypnotherapist, we have tools that can help with all three of those things. So if you are a hypnotherapist and you're watching this, or you know someone who's suffering from long COVID, then that lecture will be the first Thursday, I believe in August. And um, where we're gonna be talking about the symptoms and how we can use some of these techniques to overcome it. Really, that's on that topic, it leads into what we're going to be doing today, which is how to have complete control of your emotions. And I know if you haven't heard me talk about this before, it, it seems like a, a big thing to be talking about because people think that we're just, we just feel, it's just we are. And it's, it makes us, that's what makes us human. But as I said a moment ago, nothing exists outside of our skull except its perception. And that's pain and emotional pain but also how we feel and our emotions. And I know my son always has a go at me when I say this, but really all we come down to, which sounds like I'm degrading what human beings are, I'm not, is really just a mass of chemicals, electrically excitable cells, synapses, electrical current in our brain, in our skull. And nothing exists outside of our skull except as perception. I don't know, there's 25 people here and you're all looking at me and I'm sure that Helen could describe to Rachel what I look like. And Helen could describe to Evie what I look like. And you'd have a kind of general idea. But if Helen for one moment could have, what, have Rachel's perception of what I look like, it would be so vastly different to hers that it would be kind of mind blowing. And yet we think we're experiencing the same things. One of my favorite quotes, and I don't even know how I saw this. I must've been thinking about this at the time when I saw it. It's a Shakespearean quote. And bear in mind, the man was around 500 years ago and he was a genius, probably an alien, but he, he had these incredible um, thoughts. And he, this is the quote, which I think relates to what I'm saying here about nothing, ex nothing uh, exists outside of our skull except his perception. He said this, I could be bound in a nutshell and still consider myself king of infinite space were it not for bad dreams. So I think he must have been thinking the same thing. I could be bound in a nutshell and still consider myself king of infinite space were it not for bad dreams. Wow. So that for me is, a, is exactly what I'm talking about here this afternoon. How to have complete control of our emotions. When I first broached the idea, People said, well, if you could just switch off your emotions, doesn't that make you kind of robot-like rather than human? And I thought about that for a while, but having done this now for, for quite a long time, I honestly believe, not just about me, but all of you are going to get this idea today. When you have complete control of your emotions, it makes you a more advanced human being. Because in the history of mankind, to my knowledge, we have been slaves to our emotions. Someone makes you angry and you, someone breaks your rules and you makes you angry. And you can't say, I have a right to be angry. This person just broke my rules. And then we indulge ourselves in that anger. And generally, and if you're a therapist, you'll know this to be a fact, most of our anger, even though it's not created in our household, is, is vented in our our, our household i have quite a few people come to me for anger management i'm sure some of you if your therapists have the same thing and 
I ask the question. I say, would you speak to your boss like that, like you speak to your wife? Would you speak to one of your colleagues like you speak to your child? And the answer generally is no. If that is the case, and I say it to these, and I've had grown men crying in my office when I say it, I say you're just an effing bully. Because if you can control your anger in those situations, then all you're doing is indulging yourself in that emotion in this situation where you know people aren't going to leave you. You're taking it out on those people that aren't, you know, and we, I've done it, trust me. And I, I, I know, you know, I, I now face my own kind of limitations. But once you understand that the emotion you're feeling, if you ask this question, is this emotion I'm feeling any good to me at all? Or is it detrimental to me and the people I care about most? And to be able to recognize when you're doing that, one, you have to accept that you're behaving badly, but to be able to switch it off and go, right, I'm not doing that. To go to what I'm gonna show you to do today, to go to neutral. That's not, I don't care about anybody. That's, I'm in a neutral space. Now here's one of the scariest thing about us as human beings. Most of the big decisions we make in our life were made in an emotional state. And when we're in an emotional state, we are not functioning optimally. If you're angry, you're not making the right choices. If you are passionately in love, you are not making the right choices. So when we, if we wanna make a decision, a kind of life-changing decision, then what you're gonna to have today is the ability to access neutral to go to neutral where you can make the right decision, then take the right action and then get the right outcome. But as I said, most of the big decisions in our life were made in an emotional state. And the other scary thing is that most of what we believe we are, who we believe we are, what we believe we're capable of, what we think we can or cannot do, even, I'm gonna go as far as say, even our religious beliefs, were created by a child under seven years old. And that is a very scary thought because you would not have a five-year-old girl making a lifelong decision about what you're capable of or what you're not capable of. You would not have a four-year-old boy making a lifelong decision about whether you're lovable or not. And yet most of those decisions we seem to think we're stuck with, which of course we're not, once you recognize it, were made by a child. I'm going to show you today two things. Once I'm, I'm going to show you TPM, total perception management, how to have complete control of your emotions. And by, what I mean by that is if it's a detrimental emotion, jealousy, anger, hate, loathing, whatever it is, you can switch it off. You can go to neutral. If it's a positive emotion, love, passion, joy, happiness you can ramp that emotion up because none of these things exist outside of our skull except it's perception i know some of you are thinking well that's impossible we're human beings and is it going to make me less of a human being i promise you it's not you know i said it makes us more advanced human being i'll go one step further i believe that this is the next evolution in humankind because since the beginning of mankind, we have been slaves to our emotions. And we think I'm feeling this, I have no choice. So I'm gonna indulge myself in it. How many, I know there's not that many men here, but if it, you know, I'm gonna ask any men that are watching this, how many of you have ruined a relationship through jealousy? A good relationship, a good person, and so it might be the same for you, some of you girls. You women but when you, you you actually know you're behaving badly but we justify our behavior the conscious part of our brain i'm going to say this the conscious part of our brain makes stuff up it makes stuff up to justify our behavior because we don't want to feel bad we don't want to look stupid we don't want to believe we're, that we're not a good person so when we're behaving badly, our conscious mind makes stuff up 
to justify why we're behaving like we are. At some point, we have to accept that this behavior that I'm carrying out is not good. And instead of listening to the conscious mind going, well, yeah, but, you know, it's not your fault, it's my fault. You know, it's, it's once we get past that and we face it, then we can say, okay, then we can ask the question, is this emotion any use to me at all? When we do the arrow technique for pain, the question I ask all the people that come and see me for pain, I ask them one simple question. Is that pain any longer of any use to you? Or is it now useless, unnecessary pain? If the pain is useless, and unnecessary, long-term chronic pain, whether it's physical or emotional, we now know that as human beings, we have the ability to switch it off. It's an amazing thing when you see it. And I know some of you are already using these techniques and seeing this happen. It's an amazing thing that someone can be in pain for 30 or 40 years and within five or 10 minutes, they can not feel the pain. The brain says, okay, it accepts its use as unnecessary and switches it off. It's the same with our emotions, providing we are honest enough to face when we're behaving badly, except that this is not good behavior. This is not, this is not an emotion that's of any use to me or anyone around us. And then I'm gonna show you how today to be able to go to neutral. You know, let's take this one step further. How many people are overweight because they eat emotionally? How many people, are you? some of you are therapists, how, how many people have you seen that say, I eat when I'm emotional? All of them. Pretty much. You're right, Evie. Or, or it's part of the problem. It's one of the things. Boredom's another one. It's never the food. <laughs> no, but so you're right, Robin. So how about if you, if you could teach your patient, your client, to recognize when they're just about to eat because they're emotional and to be able to go to neutral, to completely neutralize that emotion before they get to the fridge or the cupboard. That's an amazing thing to give somebody. Imagine teaching your kids this. I, at the beginning of lockdown, um, I've got, he was 17 then, he's 18 now. And generally I hardly see him because he's in his bedroom on his games machine or talking to his friends or he's out in his man shed or whatever it is. But during lockdown, we became much closer because we were kind of forced together. It was one of the best things that come out of lockdown. So to do something together, we started, I started showing him how to play poker. And if you've ever played poker, one of those things, you've got to have a poker face. You can't show any emotion. And you don't want to have any emotion when you're playing poker. Because if you, if you think you should have won that hand and you didn't, and you get angry or you get upset, you're going to lose the next five hands. And people are going to pick it up. And around the poker table, someone's going to try and wind you up. They see that you're vulnerable in that way. So I taught him, it was two reasons. One, I wanted him to be play poker well, but the other one was because he can take that ability to go to neutral into the rest of his life. How many young men get into trouble because they just have the hormones flaring, all that kind of mannered stuff going on and they get angry and they get into trouble or whatever it might be. To be able to go to neutral, imagine giving that to your kid or your patient or your client the next time you start to feel emotional go to neutral next time you're going to make a big decision about something go to neutral i used to coach boxing for quite quite a few years i used to say that my guys before they got through the ropes i say the worst thing can happen in a boxing ring is you're going to get angry and your opponent is going to try and make you angry they're going to call your mother names. They're going to call your girlfriend names. They're going to call you names. They're going to say everything they can to make you angry because they know when you're angry, you are not functioning properly. You are not thinking straight. So of all the things I've developed, the arrow technique, the time machine, all these things, TPM, which you're going to get, get your head around today and going to be able to use for yourself, for me, is the best thing I've ever developed. Purely because, as I said, up until we've learned this, you've been slaves to your emotions. I'm sad. 
I'm hurt. I'm angry. I'm jealous. All, they, all of these emotions, and it's, it's a, that's only a short list. You can name a ton more that you know when you're in it and you like to be out of it. To be able to go to neutral and make another decision. And as I said, the other side of that coin is that you can ramp an emotion up. Now, if you're feeling pleasure, ramp that up. If you're feeling happy, ramp it up. There's no reason why, because none of this stuff exists outside of your skull. It's purely chemicals. You can change the way you feel by jumping up and down on the spot for a while. You're going to change the chemicals in your brain. If you're, if you, you, can, you can change the chemicals in your brain by having a glass of water. All of these things can be done physically, but ultimately all you are doing is changing those chemicals in your brain. So this is the ability to take complete control over it. In a while, I'm going to hypnotize you all. I'm going to get you into a state of neutral. And it is going to feel very weird because I doubt you've ever experienced it before. We're generally in some kind of emotional state. To be in a neutral state is a very strange place to be. But once you've accessed it, we're going to anchor that feeling so that you can access that feeling in any situation that you are feeling emotional where you think this i need to i need to be not emotional in this situation so you can access that feeling and then i'm going to take you to a state where you experience everything you've ever experienced in a way of love and pleasure and happiness and joy we're going to get you into that space. Be prepared. It's going to lift you out of this world. And then we're going to anchor that feeling so that the next time you're feeling happy, you're with your family, you're with your loved ones, you're with your partner, and you want to ramp that feeling up, you're going to be able to do that. That's what I want for you by the end of the day. And we're also going to teach you this new technique. If you haven't heard me say it before, and it is new, I haven't written it down anywhere. It's not in any of my literature, but I know... Uh, Petra's here. I know she's heard me say it. I'm sure Diana's heard me say it. Robin's probably heard me say it. It's this new technique which I've developed. I call it the blink and delete technique. And it's very, very simple. Someone says to me, write a book, Freddie, on it. I said, no, it's a, at most an A4 piece of paper. And it's an understanding rather than a technique. And the understanding is this. What, we, what I was saying to you earlier about the, um, the beliefs that we create about ourselves throughout our life and if you think how many decisions have you made today whether it's to turn right or left whether it's to have a glass of water or not we'll take a cup of tea or have a cup of coffee how many decisions do you make during the day now most of those decisions aren't life-changing but when we as we grow through our life we are making life there are times we make life-changing decisions as i said we're generally making them in an emotional state where we're not functioning properly. So I'm going to show you how to do this today because you're going to have the access to neutral, which you're going to learn today. But this blink and delete technique is this. The next time you come up against a block in your life, I can't do this. I can't overcome that. I'm never going to be able to achieve this. I'm not that kind of person. Whatever that negative thought is that's going through your head, this, and you can write this down if you want, I'm going to record this so you can watch it again. But this is what you're going to do. You're going to ask this question. When did I make that decision? How old was I? Where was I? Who was I with? And was it even my decision? Now, the last part of that question, you'll be amazed how often that belief you have or that decision that you can't do this or that wasn't even your, it, was, it wasn't even your decision. It was someone else's opinion about you. A teacher says to you, you're not a very sporty girl, but you are an academic. Or you're not very academic, but you are a good sport. Or whatever it might be. And they're an adult, you're a child, you go, that must be true. And you make a decision about what you're going to be capable of. It wasn't, even your, it wasn't even your decision. It was someone else's opinion about you. So the next time you come up against a block in your life, I can't do this. I'm not good at that. 
I'll never get over this. I'm afraid of that. Ask the question, when did I make that decision? How old was I? Where was I? Who was I with? And was it even my decision? And I promise you this, you will immediately go to when you made the decision. You won't have to do three years of therapy to find it. Your brain will go immediately there. And what you do then is you ask this next question. Now that I've evolved, because you all have, you're not the same people you were a week ago. You're definitely the same people you were 20 years ago because you've evolved. Now that I've evolved, is that decision any longer viable? Or is it an obsolete decision that I made in a less informed state? If the answer comes back, that, that decision is no longer viable. I know I'm loved. I know I'm a good person. I know that that fear is irrational. Once you've come to that decision, that decision that is no longer viable, this is what you do. It sounds silly, but you do this. You blink twice and you delete the decision. You make, that, you make your mind up to delete it and blink twice. Delete that decision. Then you're going to go to neutral, which you're going to learn today. And then you make a new decision from where you are now. With the understanding you have now, and the strength you have now, and the learnings you have now. I honestly believe that as human beings, we are only ever doing the best we can to thrive. That's we're not detriment doing, doing ourselves in. We're making decisions with the understanding and the under, and the and the ability and, and learning we have right in this moment you're not making the best decisions at 13 when your friends are all smoking and they offer you a cigarette and you think well they're all smoking i have to keep in with them i'll smoke it's not a good decision you wouldn't make that decision at 30 it wouldn't matter what your friends are doing so no i don't think i'll do that you're not making proper decisions when you're five or six years old and someone says to try to make out that you're not any good and you say, yeah, well, they're an adult, I'm a child, that must be true. You're not making the right decisions. So when you ask the question, when did I make that decision? How old was I? Where was I? Who was I with? Was it even my decision? You'll immediately go there. I promise you, I don't have to search for this. Your brain will immediately go there. Don't, don't think, can that be true? Don't question it because your unconscious mind wants you to thrive. Look at it again. Don't go, can that be true? Is that not even possible? Accept that that is where that happened when you made that decision. Ask the question, is that any longer viable now that I'm an adult? Imagine all of us, how many of us could go back to our 13 year old self and give our 13 year old self some advice? You know, when you don't think you're even going to reach 20, that seems miles off. How many, how many kids are making decisions at 13 years old? I often have my clients say, look, and they come in, I ask questions, you know, who, who do you love and what have your kids you've got? And they tell me, I say, go back to that 13-year-old girl. Tell her about the man she's going to meet and love. Tell her about the children she's going to have. Tell her about how brilliant that her life's going to be. Because at 13, sometimes you don't see that. And you're making decisions based on that belief. But to be understand, and maybe just, you know, where your life's gone and how good it is and how, how are you being? You know, I know some of you here. I've met you personally. And I know the trials and, and things you've been through. To be able to go back to that younger you and go, look, you're going to get over this. In those darkest moments when you don't think you're going to get over it, your future self could tell you this is what you're going to do. The incredible Milton Erickson, I always think of him as the kind of godfather of hypnotherapy. You know, the man was a genius. We have him every now and again. And he would often get his clients to do this. He'd, he would ask the client what the problem was. And then he'd say, okay, I'm going to hypnotize you. He'd go out into the future to a time when you've overcome this problem. Now look back to now and notice all the things you did that led to resolving that problem. 
then he'd bring them out of hypnosis. And he'd say, okay, what were all the things you did? And the client would say, okay, well, I did this, did this, did this, did this. And he'd write it down. Then he'd say, okay, close your eyes, go back into hypnosis. From today, you will do this, 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 and this. It's like the chicken and the egg, which came first? Did the client tell Ericsson and make him make and the, the things he needed to do to overcome it? Or did Ericsson ask the question and get it first? But either way, he knew exactly what that client needs to do. Because like Ericsson, I start with the belief that the only person in my therapy room that knows the answer to their problem and has the strength, the ability to overcome that problem is the person in the therapy chair, not in my chair. I do have a learned ability to help that client get out of their own way so they can see the answers, they can find what they need to do and maybe suggest that they get, have the strength to do it. But they're going to make that choice and they're going to make, they're going to take responsibility for it, which is different to how a lot of people work in therapy where you think you've got to come up with a strategy, you've got to tell that person what they're going to do. I work in a completely opposite way. And Ericsson did that. Go out into the future to a point where you've overcome this problem. Look back to now and notice the things you did along the way that led to that thing. I do this with my weight loss clients. They already know what they've got to do to lose the weight. Most of them are intelligent enough to know that if they eat this, this, and this, they're going to lose weight and they move like this, going to lose weight. So I just get, go out into the future. You're nine stone. You've lost that weight. You're looking and feeling great. Step into that body, feel what it feels like, look back to now and notice the things you did along the way that led to that feeling. Now I'd like your unconscious mind to take that learning and integrate it into your body and mind. And from today, you'll find yourself blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not difficult. I don't have to figure out what my client needs to do. I already know at some level. So to be able to, to ask that question, when did I make the decision? Look at it again, blink twice, delete it if it's obsolete. Then go to neutral, which you're going to learn in a moment, and, and make a new decision. So many of us are living with decisions we made at four years old. Or five years old, or seven years old, or 13 years old. We don't have to. We can look at it again. We don't have to say it's just the way it is. I'm just an angry person. I'm just this kind of pig person. We don't have to. We can at any, at any moment of your life decide to be something else. And I know I'm, I'm, and I, this is a stretch to understand. But what if you're feeling depressed and you know you're feeling depressed and ask that question, is this any good to me? And then just decide to be happy for no good reason. Just say, I'm going to be happy. I know there's some doctors here, and I know some who say, well, it's a chemical imbalance. It's not a choice. You can't exercise and be depressed. It's impossible. You can't run and be depressed because your brain, the chemicals are different in your brain. You can find other ways to do it, or you can just decide to be happy no matter what. I know, I know this is a stretch for some of you to think that, because I know, you know most, of, most, of the, most of the depression is dealt with pills. But if you look at the last 50 years, when you see this, how many people are now depressed, compared to how many were 50 years ago, What's happened is the world suddenly changed and people suddenly brain, the bank brain chemistry's changed. No, it's because we label it. And people say, well, where in the past I would be fed up. And I had a client came to see me, she said, I'm depressed. I said, well, tell me about your life. She said, well, I'm living a man I don't like anymore. My kids have been horrible, now they're gone. You know, I'm overweight. And um, she gave me a couple, I said, well, you're just seriously fed up with your life. Change it. <laughs> Nothing's, I'd be fed up. I was living with a man I don't love anymore. I, I, I was seriously overweight and I, you know, my kids were horrible to me. I'd be, I'd be depressed. Or you can say, well, no matter what's going on around me, 
I'm going to go to neutral and I'm going to be happy. What if you could just choose how you want to feel that day? I believe we can. I honestly believe we can. Just put a smile on your face, walk up and down the road, just to annoy the neighbours. That will cheer you up, I promise you. How bad you're feeling. Just do that for a few hours, and I'll tell you, you won't be feeling bad afterwards. It's impossible. So we're going to get you to neutral, and you're going to love it. And I'm t I, I will say this now. Once you've learned this, it puts you in, and I don't even like the word, but it puts you in an elite space. Because there's only a handful of people on this planet, maybe some really top surgeons who can go to that space, whether they're trained or whether they just have it. And we know some of these brilliant uh, surgeons. I'm sure <laughs> it's a terrible thing to say, but some of them are on the spectrum. They're kind of, it's the only thing they can do. They're genius at one thing. But to be able to open someone's brain up or body up and, and stay completely unemotional in that, if you've got a child on that, on that operating table or a young girl or whatever, to be able to stay completely emotional, unemotional is incredible. They can't get emotional in those situations. And, but there are a few people that are born like that, have that ability naturally. What I'm saying to you is you can learn to do this yourself. So the next time you make a decision, you can go there and stay in that position. So that's what we're going to do. It's enough chat. I hope you understand what we're going to do here today. But yeah, it's about to change your life, I promise you. No more will you say, I'm just angry. No more will you suffer from jealousy. No more will you be behaving badly and just going it's just the way it is. Because you'll have no excuse. It is about being honest with yourself. It is about accepting that there are times when you're not being your best self and say and ask the question, is this any good to me? Is it any good to the people around me? Switch it off. If you're feeling anxious or stressed about something, Here's what they say. If you're feeling depressed, you're thinking, you're worrying about something that happened in the past. If you're suffering from anxiety or stress, you are worrying about something in the future. And none of those things exist. The past is a void. It's a vacuum that stretches back to the Big Bang. Even what I've just said is now in that void. We can worry about it, we can search it out, and we can spend months and years of therapy looking at our past, but it's of no consequence because it's in the void, that no longer exists. What I say to my clients, because I'm a forward-focused therapist, Quite hard to say when you haven't got your teeth in. I'm a forward focused therapist. And I want my, I, as soon as I can, because especially when I've seen clients who have been in therapy before, they generally want to tell me why they are like they are. They'll spend weeks if I wanted them to. I don't. I can't, I don't want to hear it. I, I really, I don't want to be rude, but I'm not interested. And I say to them, look, it might be interesting to know why you are like you are but it's truly of no consequence. What I want from my client is to know how they want to feel an hour from now, how you want to feel next week or a month from now or 20 years from now. And people will want to tell me about their past. And I'm not going to be rude and saying I'm not interested, but as soon as I can, I'm going to ask the question, what do you want? How do you want to be an hour from now? So the past is a void, it's a vacuum, it's of no consequence anymore other than for interest. The future hasn't happened yet, so it can only be imagined. It's not real. It can only be imagined. So if you're worrying about something in the future, then remind yourself, at this moment in time, it's just your imagination. 
It is not real. And bring yourself back to the present. They did some research on, um, on the brain some years ago. Uh, my son would be able to tell you chapter and verse because he reads everything. But I, I gain snippets of things that stick and lodge. And this bit of research, what they did, they put a guy in an HMRI scanner where they could see what was going on in his brain. They put those electrodes on his head and they gave him a simple task. And the task was to press a button in his right hand or in his left hand whenever he felt like doing it, like randomly. Press his thumb, press his thumb on his button. After five or 10 minutes of looking at this guy's brain scan or his brain activity, the people that are watching that screen could predict which thumb he was going to press before he pressed it. And sometimes, get this, it was 15 seconds before he pressed his thumb, even though he thought he was doing it as he thought about it. I'm going to press my thumb, press my thumb. And what, they, what they found from this bit of research was this. The brain, the unconscious mind, makes a decision before you move but it's out of consciousness. If I ask you to pick, if you had a cup on your desk or a pen on your desk, and I should pick that pen or that cup up, you could do that easily, yeah? Simply. <clears throat> to build a robot, to do that one simple task would be immense. Take the best mechanics, the best computer people, all of those people to build a robot, to do that one simple task, pick that cup up, pour it into a hole in its face, put the cup down without spilling anything or breaking the cup. It would take the best mechanics and computer people in the world to build that robot. Yet the moment I say, can you pick the cup up? You pick that cup up and put it back down. But everything you need to do to pick that cup up before, without spilling it has already been figured out in your brain in a millisecond before you move a muscle everything think about that everything you do has already been figured out in your brain now when i read that bit of research it occurred to me i can't pick a cup up i can't speak to you i can't present to hundreds of people without my brain running to the outcome it's how our brain works it will figure out everything i need to do before i move a muscle so here's the thing about that it works generally to help us function as we function as human beings where it works against this is when our survival part of our brain kicks in and when you think about having an interview or you think about meeting someone for the first time, your brain's going to run to the worst case scenario to help you avoid feeling embarrassed or getting hurt or whatever it might be. That's how our brain works. But once you realize that what you're thinking and what you're feeling anxious about or stressed about or worried about, at this moment, this, this millisecond we're in right now, at this moment, it is just your imagination. It's not real. Once we recognize that, then we can decide to imagine something different. How many of you, I don't have to, you don't have to tell, you put your hands up. I don't want to know what it is. How many of you are, 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 are anxious or feeling stressed about something that's coming up soon? Any of you feeling anxious or stressed? Okay, there's a few of you. Yeah? Okay. Do this. Imagine it differently. Imagine the outcome differently. Just do that. Imagine the outcome differently. Do it now. Okay, now try and feel that anxiety. Where's it gone? Put your hand up if you still feel that anxiety. There's no hands going up. 
We can change someone's life in a sentence. The next time someone says to you, oh, you know, Sarah, I'm feeling really anxious. I've got this thing coming up, you know, and uh, blah, 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 blah. And you could just say, imagine it differently. It's not real at this point in time. Imagine it differently. Honestly, I don't think change for us is, is difficult. We can decide to be happy. If we're worrying about something that hasn't happened yet, imagine it differently. You know, I'll, I'll share this with you. And it is, you know, it's, it's very, very personal. But my, my granddaughter, Beth, is a fantastic girl. She's 27 now. But she, you know, she was in, the, in played football for Kent. She played hockey for Kent. She went to the grammar school. She was doing, she was at university studying Spanish and politics. She went to Fuerteventura for a year as part of her course in a Spanish speaking country. She comes back to England. She's driving down a road with her mom and her two brothers in the back. She, she pulls up and she has a fit. She's never been ill in her life. She has a fit, goes on for six minutes. So they take her to the doctor and they send her to Great Ormond Street or wherever it was, one of these, or St. Thomas's in London. And she's got a tumor on the side of her brain, an arachnoid, I think they call it. You know, not a, not a lump, but a spider tumor, unoperable. So she's 21 years old, whole life ahead of her, got all her plans, bosh. They can't operate. So they say, OK, well, we're going to monitor it every six months. So she's my first grandchild. I've got five. And um, so I said to her, Beth, we don't know how long you've had this thing and we don't know it. Had, you know, they're going to monitor it. It never changed. And they couldn't operate. And I said, look, and a, a, a grandmother, as most of you would be, a distraught. We're all distraught. And thinking well you know she's going to die and she's going to not have a life she wants and whatever else i decided that i was i'm going to imagine that she's going to be okay because the alternative i couldn't wake up in the morning now i couldn't carry on so anyway i said the other thing is medical science changes it's immense you know the computer work stuff we've got anyway last year july um she met this surgeon, another surgeon. He said, I think we can operate. And this is now she's 26. So she elected, even though she was back at hockey, she's teaching Spanish at school, she's doing whatever it is. And she's doing having that life. She decides because she wants to get married. She wants to have kids. And she doesn't want to have this thing quite literally hanging over her head. So she elected. Now, for me, she's the bravest woman I know. 12 hours of surgery with three of the top surgeons and they remove this. Now she's moved in with her partner uh, into a new house, she's bought a new house. She's teaching Spanish and PE at the grammar school in Tunbridge Wells and she's back to playing hockey. I could have spent the last six years completely gutting myself every day. Do you understand what I'm saying here? And I said to Beth at the time, I said, look, Beth, you may as well imagine the best outcome. That's pretty difficult when someone says you've got brain cancer. You might as well imagine the best outcome because either way, at this point in time, it's not real. It's a hard thing to wrap your head around. But all of a sudden, your life changes. Because the worst thing that can happen is you can be disappointed. But all of you do this. Just, just, for the, just do it for me, just for the sake of it. Put your right arm in in front of you. Shoulder height. Do it now. And just think about the people you love. And for some of you who are, who are carers, think about the people you've helped. And feel that love and see those faces now. And as you feel that love and see those faces, I want you to notice that arm's hanging all by itself. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. And when you realise there's nothing you can do about it, I want you to try and get that arm down and find it goes even higher. And I do not want you to pretend. Push even harder, find it goes even higher. Put some effort in. Harder you try and get that arm down, the higher it's going to go. Push even harder, find it goes even higher. Are you hypnotised? Are you in a trance? Why can't you get your arms down? I'm going to click my fingers and your arm will drift down. Your eyes will close for a split second. When they open, you'll realise just how incredible and how loved you are. Get ready.
That's right, Evie. Arm drifting down. That's right, Robin. Petra. That's right. You know, think about what just happened there. In quite literally, in seconds. If we imagine something strongly, our body will carry it out. I would say to all of you, I don't, I don't know what, what's happening in your life, and some of you might be ill, some of you might be suffering, I don't know. But my attitude to this is you may as well imagine the best outcome. Because either way, it's not real. But now you have an understanding about the power of your imagination over your body. Do this. Imagine I've got a lemon in my hand, a bright yellow lemon. Can you see it? See that lemon in my hand and imagine I've got a serrated knife in this hand. And watch as I cut through the lemon. Hear the skin cracking. See the juices running down my arm. And watch as I bite into it. Oh, what's happening in your mouth? Look at Sarah's face. What's happening in your mouth? You're salivating, yeah? How many of you felt like your mouth watering? I haven't got a lemon. <laughs> I haven't got a knife. <laughs> but if you think about it strongly enough, your mouth waters. That's a physical thing. If you've got something wrong with you, I don't know if it's high blood pressure, imagine, I don't know, a little, one of those, you know, those, uh, what do they call them, that go down the, down of rivers, trawling out all the stuff from it. Imagine one of those things going through your arteries, clearing out all the cholesterol. I don't know. If you've got, you know, if you've got something wrong with you, picture a way of it disappearing. Think of it as a chunk of ice. Imagine people you love and the heat from your love melting the ice away. See what happens in your body. There's nothing to lose by this. As I say to all my clients, I'm not giving you pills or potions. It's words, it's your imagination. But you've had an experience of how powerful your imagination is. It's super powerful. And it will carry out what, I'm, what it's supposed to do. It's just through emotion. Evie, can you hear me? You can see me, can you? Evie, think about our time together in, in Las Vegas, our friendship. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Think about the love that people feel for you. As you feel that love now, Evie, I want you to notice you're stuck in your chair. Imagine there's nothing you can do about it, Evie. You're super glued to your chair. And when you realise you're stuck in that chair, I want you to try and stand up. And I don't want you to pretend, Evie. Try and get out of your chair. See what happens. Mm. <laughs> try even harder. Find your stick even tighter. Okay. <laughs> I can't. Try, try and stand up and find you completely stuck. Oh, it's very odd. I'll click my fingers. Everything goes back to normal, Evie. Everything goes back to normal. You're, of course you can stand up. Okay, yes, I can get that. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Our minds are so, so powerful. But me suggesting that Evie's stuck in her chair is no different to you saying you're stuck with a habit or you're stuck with this problem. It's a self-suggestion. It's no different. It's as real or unreal, if you like, because it's not real, is it? But it's a suggestion. It's either self-suggested. So... I know I'm going on here today, but I want you to, to, I want you when you leave it today, understand a few things. One, nothing's real. The past is a vacuum. It's a void that stretches back to the Big Bang. It's gone. Whatever happened in that void is done. And your future hasn't happened yet. It can only be imagined. That's not real. There is only this moment. So if you're worrying about the past, just say to yourself, there's no point. It's done. Yes, I messed up. Or yes, that was horrible. Or yes, that person was horrible to me. And I wish it hadn't happened. But wishing is for kids, as you well know. It's of no consequence. Then shut the door on it. If you're worrying about the future, if you're anxious or stressed about something that's coming up, bring yourself back to right this moment and, and remind yourself it's just your imagination. I'm going to do something. I don't really, I rarely do this unless I'm feeling really kind of, nutty at the time but i'm going to do it today and you're all going to be stuck with this and I, I i'm going to warn you now if you don't want to be stuck with my voice in your head you need to kind of turn the sound off because i am going to sing to you in a moment it might not be pleasant but i'm going to be sing to sing to you 
and you'll be stuck with it forever. And the next time you start to get stressed or anxious, you're going to hear my voice in your head, all right? <laughs> you've got to give up two seconds. If you don't want to hear it, switch the sound off because you're going to get it in a moment, right? From today, whenever you start to get anxious or worried about something that's coming up, you're going to hear my voice in your head singing this song. Are you all ready? Nod your heads if you're ready for this. Okay, because you are going to be stuck with it. It's just my imagination running away with me. Just my imagination running away with me. And you're going to be stuck with that in your head. The next time you start to get anxious, oh, shit, there he goes again. And you're going to bring yourself back to the moment. And remind yourself, if you can imagine something, you can't not, you might as well imagine the best outcome. Because either way, it's not real. Do you understand? Good. Right. So tonight, right, we're going to hypnotize you all. I'm going to take you into a state of neutral. You're going to love it. And then I'm going to anchor that feeling. And then I'm going to run it again, but this time with the most incredible feeling of love, joy, happiness, and bliss. And we're going to leave you in that state today so you can take that into the weekend. A totally new understanding of just how incredible you are. So if you're ready to do this, make sure you're in a safe place, you're comfortable. Not perched on the end of the table with a hot cup of tea in your lap or anything like that. Now, whatever happens next, your chair will, will support you, okay? Get into this with me, and I'm going to say what I say to all my clients. Listen to me if you want, but I don't mean this rudely. I'm not interested in your conscious mind. You try to overcome these things or do these things consciously, it hasn't worked. This is an unconscious ability. Your unconscious mind will hear everything I've got to say. It will take from it what is needed for you to free yourself forever, okay? To have complete control of your emotions from this day forward. So what I like to do is this, if you're ready. Uh, place your hands separately, Linda. That's it. Don't, no arms crossed, no legs crossed. All right, just place your hands separately, your legs separately. Get comfortable, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, allow your eyes to close and relax only as quickly as you're ready to have complete control of your life and your emotions. I'm gonna say some words and I want you just to repeat these words in your mind and aim them at yourself. Even at first you don't feel it completely, you will in a moment. And whatever happens next, your chair will support you, okay? So just repeat these words to yourself, aim them at yourself, want them for yourself. I am completely calm and relaxed. I am completely calm and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My right arm is heavy and relaxed. My right arm is heavy and relaxed. My right arm is heavy and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My left arm is heavy and relaxed. My left arm is heavy and relaxed. My left arm is heavy and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My right leg is heavy and relaxed. My right leg is heavy and relaxed. My right leg is heavy and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My left leg is heavy and relaxed. My left leg is heavy and relaxed. My left leg is heavy and relaxed. 
my mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. My mind and body are completely calm and relaxed. Now, as you drift deeper and deeper into that wonderful place, I'm going to snap my fingers and that feeling of calm relaxation is going to go right through your body like a general anesthesia. The chair will support you. Feel that feeling flooding through your body. In a moment, you can have the experience of separating from your body, the essence of who you are that intangible part of your being. Some cultures call it the spirit, the soul, the mind, but that intangible part of your being, the passenger, the observer in that human body. Get a sense of that happening now, just leaving your body in that chair for a while. The most incredible thing of liberation. You may even be able to look back and see your body in that chair, See the clothes you're wearing as you drift away from your body and that understanding that you're not your body and you're not your name. Notice that the essence of who you are, it's ageless, it's infinite. And as you get a sense of yourself drifting further and further away from your body. My voice and my words will drift with you to become a part of your experience now. Every word I say is going to take you deeper and deeper into the most profound state of hypnosis. Imagine it's happening automatically. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. Every word I say just doubles that incredible feeling. Just for a while, nobody wants anything. No one expects anything. There is nothing for you to do but to allow yourself to experience that wonderful feeling of trance. Imagine just drifting down into that space. Get a sense of just drifting deeper and deeper into the most profound state of hypnosis, down toward a place of total bliss, and just when you think you've reached the ultimate space of bliss and freedom, my voice, my words are going to take you 10 times deeper. And as you drift in that space, my voice is going to drift with you. Every word I say doubles that incredible feeling. Everything I say now is your reality. Every suggestion I give you your mind and body will act upon at a molecular, cellular, neurological level. It's now your reality. Just for a while, you'll see what I say you can see, you'll feel what I say you can feel, hear what I say you can hear, believe what I say you believe. As you drift deeper and deeper into that space, imagine it's happening automatically. That's right. Just drifting through time and space. unaware of where your left hand is or your right foot or your right arm or your left leg or your face or your body as it just disappears into the ether. The most incredible feeling of liberation. Imagine now that you're drifting further and further away from your body. Get a sense of yourself drifting so high that you can look down and see the planet Earth below you. That beautiful, incredible blue planet. How lucky are you to have landed on this planet of all the planets in the known universe? How lucky are we that we land on this planet that can sustain life? How incredible is that? I want you to notice as you look at the planet from way off how your perspective changes. You can think about the seven and a half billion people on that planet of which you are one. One unique, incredible individual. There's been a hundred billion people lived on planet Earth. 
since mankind began. But there's never been anyone like you. You are unique. You are the most incredible creation in the known universe. There's never been anyone like you. There will never, ever be anyone like you. You are unique. You are incredible. You are love. You are loved. You are loving. And notice as you look at the planet from way off, how your perspective changes. Things that had seemed overwhelming no longer have any power over you. Things that had seemed hard or difficult to overcome no longer have any power over you. You are incredible. You are the most incredible creation in the known universe. You are love. You are loved. You are loving. Now get a sense of a target, a massive target between you and that planet. Get a sense of those bands, maybe get a sense of the colours. Get a sense of the centre, the bullseye. Now in the centre of that target, is every negative emotion you've ever experienced. Anger, hate, jealousy, sadness, frustration, hurt, pain is in the center of that target. Every negative emotion you've ever experienced in the center of that target. Now in a moment, I'm gonna make this sound. As I make that sound, you are gonna be fired, shot like an arrow straight through the center of the target and straight out the other side in a millisecond. And as you go through the target, those emotions are gonna be wiped from your mind and your body, and you're gonna enter a state of neutral. It's gonna be a strange experience. So be brave. This is the last time that those negative emotions will have any power over you, because you are gonna take absolute control of you. So as I make that sound, you're going to be fired, shot like an arrow, straight through the centre of that target into a space of neutral emotion, and it's going to be incredible. Get ready. And now you're out the other side, just drifting in that space of neutral. Nothing bothers or affects you. Nothing disturbs you. Experience that feeling of neutral now. And as you experience that feeling neutral, I'm going to snap my fingers once. And the sound of me snapping my fingers once is going to anchor to that incredible state of neutral. From today, whenever you want to get to a space of neutral where you can make the right decisions, take the right actions, get the right outcome, snap your fingers once, you're going to go back to this state of neutral. Just experience it now, total neutral emotion. It's a space you may have never experienced before and from today, whenever you want to experience neutral to make the right decision, take the right action, get the right outcome, you just snap your fingers once and you'll instantly return to this state of neutral. Now, once again, get a sense of yourself drifting higher and higher once again, drifting back up to that space beyond the earth. So you can look back at the planet Earth and get a sense of that planet in your mind's eye. Just get a sense of it. Get a sense of that target once again. See the colored bands, see the center. Now in the center of that target now is every positive emotion you ever experienced. Love, passion, pleasure, joy, happiness, confidence, fearlessness, is in the center of that target. This time when I make that sound, whoosh, you're going to be fired through that target. But this time your body is going to be flooded with the most intense, incredible feeling of love and happiness and joy, pleasure, passion. So get ready. It's going to be an incredible experience. As I make that sound, you're going to be fired through that target into a space of total pleasure, happiness, love, and joy. I want you to enjoy every moment. Imagine there's nothing you can do about it. As I make that sound, you're gonna go through that target into a space of total joy, and your mind and body are gonna be flooded with that incredible feeling. Get ready. Now you're in that space, 
Think of the people you love. Think about the people you've helped. Feel that love. Feel that passion. Feel that pleasure. Feel that joy. Let it fill you up. Imagine it's happening. It's flooding your body and your mind. Imagine it's going to every cell, every fiber, lighting you up, lifting you up. Feel it flooding your body. That incredible feeling of love, joy, happiness and bliss. And notice that your body cannot contain that feeling. Imagine it's going beyond your body and rippling out to the edges of the known universe. And you're at the center of it because it is infinite, that feeling. Feel it even stronger. Now, as you feel it even stronger, I'm going to snap my fingers twice very quickly. And it's going to ramp that feeling up. It's going to get 10 times stronger. Just when you think you can't experience any more love or joy or pleasure or passion, feel it growing, feel it expanding, feel it going out through from your body to the edges of the universe. And from today, whenever you're feeling love or passion or pleasure or happiness, and you want to ramp that feeling up, you snap your fingers twice quickly, you'll instantly ramp that feeling up, feel it growing stronger and stronger now. Drift across the other side of the room, get a sense of yourself looking at yourself from the other side of the room and see yourself in that chair in pure love, pure joy, pure happiness and see it, see that body flooded with that feeling. I'd like your unconscious mind and make those changes now. And from today, whenever you want to go to neutral so you can make the right decision, take the right action, get the right outcome, you just snap your fingers once. But when you're feeling pleasure and love and joy, you're going to snap your fingers twice quickly and you're going to ramp that feeling up because now you have absolute control of you. I'm going to snap my fingers twice again. Feel that feeling growing. Just when you think you've reached the ultimate space of happiness, joy and love, feel it growing because you are love and you are loved and you are loving. You are the most incredible creation in the known universe. Only then will you drift back into your body, drop down into your body in that chair and allow yourself that experience of love and joy and happiness. Feel it now. Let it flood your body. Think of times when you've laughed for no reason. And think of one of those moments right now. Feel that laughter. One of those belly laughs where you just couldn't stop laughing. It's one of those crazy feelings. Feel into it now. Feel into that moment. Pull it into your heart. Feel your heart being flooded with that feeling of laughter. Think of a moment of gratitude, a time when you just felt that feeling of pure gratitude for someone, something, someplace. Feel into it and then pull that into your heart. Now feel your heart expanding with that love and happiness and, and gratitude and laughter. Now think of that moment of love, pure, absolute love unconditional love for someone something or you felt that for yourself think of that moment now feel into that i know you are loved and you are loved and you are loving pull that into your heart let that grow as i snap my fingers twice feel it getting stronger and stronger and that feeling is going to stay with you and it's going to grow stronger over the weekend as you take absolute control of you you are incredible Go with your unconscious often as you need to, to know one snap, you can go to neutral. Two snaps, you can ramp up a good feeling. Because in a moment, I'm going to count to 10. Every suggestion I've given you, your mind and body will now act upon. On eight, your eyes will open. You're going to feel incredible. A feeling of freedom and love and joy you may have never experienced before. And on 10, that wonderful feeling of freedom as you take absolute control of your emotions, it's going to grow stronger day by day. So get ready. As I count to 10, every suggestion I've given you is now your reality. And on eight, your eyes will open. You're going to feel incredible. And on 10, that feeling of love and joy, that new understanding that you are not your body, you are not your name, you are miles, miles more than that. One absolutely wonderful two to create the life and the happiness you want no it's okay to do that three a thing of freedom from every negative thought that ever held you back you are love you are loved you are loving 
Four, feel the force of that love and joy and happiness flooding your body and your mind now, lighting you up, lifting you up. Five, feel incredibly alive now. Six, seven, eight, eyes opening, feel absolutely incredible. Nine, ten. Excellent. Zoom wave. All right, lovely. All right, look, well, I hope you enjoyed the experience. If any of you would like, I, I don't, I never sell things on here, but where I run with along with my son, I run the Jacqueline um, Hypnosis Academy. It's a 14 day free trial. So you don't have to commit to it. You will once you've done it because it's beautiful, but you can try it out for 14 days, join up. You can, if you want to do that next week on Wednesday, we're running the first unit of our professional hypnotherapy diploma course. And in the first unit, we teach you how to hypnotize. So if you're not already doing hypnosis, we teach you in that first unit. And you can have that for free in your 14 day trial. And there's all the other things, the, the work I did with Mike Mandel in Toronto, all of that stuff, the quit smoking protocols out there. You could binge on Freddy for the next fortnight. Um, don't eat anything, just binge on Freddy for the next fortnight. And, uh, it's, and see what you think. I don't normally sell stuff here, and I'm not selling stuff, but it's, uh, but it's my duty to let you know about it because it is brilliant and you would love it. So anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed today. Take that feeling of love and joy into the weekend. Remember, if you're feeling great, you've got people to love around you, they don't have to know you're doing it. They can think you're just keeping rhythm with some unknown song going on in your head. Snap your fingers twice and ramp the feeling up. If for any reason you find yourself going into a negative emotion, you ask the question, is it any good to me? No, switch it off. Go to neutral, make a new decision, all right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today. I think we've run over 15 minutes or so. I hope you uh, haven't uh, sport something for you. All right, nice to see you, Evie. From, uh, I hope I'll see you in Las Vegas this year. Um, but if not, I know we're going to catch up someplace on the planet soon. All right, have a beautiful weekend, all of you. Love to you all. And enjoy the weekend. Take care. All right. Bye for now. Thank you. Jacqueline Hypnosis Academy. Become a certified head case like me. Thank you so much, Freddie. Thank Good you, Freddie. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good weekend. Thank, Thank you, you Freddie. Good to see you Thanks. all. Thank you, Freddie. Maybe email it. Thank you. Good to see you, Rachel. And you too. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Linda. Bye. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye now.